welcome back to the channel folks and as promised and as requested I'm going to do a video today on the very basics of 3D printing which I hope you find useful and the practical applications of uh, for myself at least of 3D printing from for many it's a hobby and they just print things off for fun for myself I see the practical side of it and have used it I've had the, I've had the print now for six years believe it or not I was just looking back on previous files and I've used it quite extensively over that time and it's paid for itself over and over and I've even managed to sell some prints here and there to to others that needed them so hopefully this will be useful to you it is a very simplistic it's, it's easy guide to get into 3d printing and the simple way that I do it because I like simple okay so of course the first thing you're gonna want is a 3d printer now these are relatively cheap compared to what they used to be years ago um, there's two options buy a used one which for what you'll pay for a used one compared to what you pay for a new one is a bit of a risk because you've got a question why somebody selling it they may simply be selling it because they're upgrading to a newer version or there may simply be something wrong with it um, now which one to choose I've had mine as an Ender 3 um, for six years or so I haven't had to change anything on it at all, just set it to go and brilliant. So step one, get yourself a 3D printer. Okay, the next step you'll want is to get yourself some editing software. Now this really, or 3D modeling software I should say, now this can range from spending a pile of money on some really high-end stuff, which is fairly complex to use, or do what I do because I like simple, is to get the simple stuff. It's like 3D modeling for dummies, which suits me down to the ground, a program called Tinkercad. Now it's pretty easy to get hold of. It's um, something you can use for free. It's by Autodesk. We'll also do um, higher end uh, modeling software, which I've tried and it's too complicated, too complex for me. I work well enough with the, the, the Tinkercad. And it is dead simple. It is drag and drop. So to set up your Tinkercad, click on, look up Tinkercad on the internet and sign up for a new thing. So create a personal account, put in some details, sign up with email, etc. You get this, put, so you want to put UK in there and then you want to put your date of birth in there. You can put a fake one in there if you like. It's my, what I've got in there, what I'm showing now is just fake details. and then create your account. So put your email in there and your password and off you go. And then you'll come, when you go to sign in, you'll get this. So you, what you want to do is uh, create a personal account and then sign in with your email and login details that you've just created. Then once you've got that to sign in, this is what you do next. So you be signed in details, put in your email address there. Your password is normal. And now at this stage, you'll get sent an, a code to your email address. So pick that, send code. And once you've got your code, you'll put that in your digit thing there. So this, once you're logged in, you'll be logged in for a couple of weeks, I think it is, or thereabouts. But once you're in, you're away. And here you see some of the bits and bobs I've done previously. And I've been doing this for a few years now with this um, Tinkercad. Six years I've had, I've been meddling around with this. So this is an example of one of the things I've built. This was the um, a rev counter adapter. So I could use a, a cheapo eBay rev counter in my Mark 1 Escort. Save me a fortune again. But if we go out of that, we go back to the main screen. And this is how you start. You create a new 3D design and click on that and away you go. And this is just drag and drop. Drag shapes across, change the shapes of them to suit what you want it to be. Uh, you can alter the sizes of them. This is all dead simple stuff. Uh, change the edges of it, make it a sort of softer edge on it. Uh, this steps button just makes it either harsh or soft again. 
So you got to, you, you, you can see how easy it is to use. Um, it doesn't suit everybody. Some people want the more complexities of a, a, a better grade setup, but this has suited me out, out in all sorts of designs with this over the years. So again, if you want to make a hole in it, drag it, drag the hole across, use a ruler to line things up, and it, it, it's really dead simple. So you use a ruler, there you can see you can move things to one edge of the ruler, or you can set it up to, to be central, as you'll see just now. So use midpoint, put that to zero, and that centralizes things, put that to zero, and that brings everything to the center of that box is in the middle. Again, if you want to put this hole in the center of it, use that to centralize it, put it together, and boom, you have a hole. And that is the basics of 3D printing using Tinkercad. And everything I've built is using on this principle. What we've got here is an example of what practical things you can do with the 3d printer if that's what you want it for so here i've got the um mask or filter mask uh that came with these filters so what i've done i've printed trying to do this one-handed printed off these adapters that go over those where these would normally go Oop. there we go so the, those would normally fit like so on the mask, something like that. So what I've done, I've simply printed off this adapter set up here that will allow these to be fitted to it. So what I've done with this then is I've now had an air-fed mask. So this is a pump from, um, uh, what do you call it, like an airbed type air pump and connected up to... A bit that I've so this is in three parts as one part, two parts, three parts glued together. This accepts a battery like you get on your Nikita battery drill. There's a eBay bought a bit of electronics there, so we can turn the motor on and off to suit. And that then pulls air in through these masks, pumps it through that bit of pond piping into the into the actual face mask there this has just capped off so i now have a fed mask i've also super glued in some glasses so i can see what i'm doing so that's just a, a quick example of how useful a 3d printer can be and now for a, a quick demonstration of said 3d mask stuck on my face so i've got it all belt there so i can strap that around my waist so we can get this a bit further away so we can get all it in shot. Maybe. There you go. So we're on the waist with this. This belt used to fit me better. Got fat as a good order. Mask on. Once you're happy with your design, you want to export that in a file that your printer will understand, and that is an STL file. And then you'll open that in a program called Cura, 
by Ultimaker. Again, all free software. And you can see, you can move it around, make sure you're happy with where it is placed on the bed. And where you see it in that box is where the printer will print it to. You've got a drop down menu there for the different options you want for the quality, the wall thickness and all that. Save to disk. Um, save to um, a memory card, preferably, which you'll need to send over then to the printer. The printer will then be able to print that off. Lovely. Oh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope it has inspired some of you at least to get into uh, 3D printing and, and get one. The, the printers themselves are, are cheap enough. They're straightforward enough to set up and the filament is, is cheap enough. And even if you just want to do it for a hobby, as a, if you're a creative type and you want to, which is, and there's plenty of people like that, and I applaud people like that. Um, and, and brilliant. If you need something for making useful practical applications that's these things are perfect for that and the parts that you can recreate with them with a little bit of ingenuity and using 3d modeling software or even downloading stuff from from thingiverse it, 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 they are brilliant uh, they and and if and, and on first view they seem like some sort of dark magic thing going on which it will they'll be impossible to understand but they really are not that difficult to get into once you, once you get your head around it get into it. So hopefully this was useful to you and uh, see you on the next one.